Good morning. I want to welcome everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the 17th day in the 10th month, the year of our Lord, year 2021. We want to thank those that are here this morning and those that are watching us live. We appreciate you. Today, this month is a clergy appreciation month, ministers' appreciation month, and we are choosing today to be ministers' appreciation Sunday. We want to thank you for your support, your care, and everything that you have been doing. There are so many ministers that we have in this church that are not seen or heard. We have some ministers at the children's church, and most of the time they are there caring for our children. We have David Day, we have uh, Sherry Whedon, and we have and, uh, Angela. Angela Palmer. The, most of the time you may not see them, but they are doing a great work. And we have some other ministers that are behind the scene, uh, doing one thing or the other for the progress of this church. Today is the day to appreciate all our ministers. Please send them a note. Send a thank you word, call them, you will send them flowers, you will send them gifts. And I pray that the Lord will bless you as you do this. We have a few announcements this morning. All our programs are listed in our bulletin. If you would like to confess your faith, join the church, confirmation classes, please call the church as we start uh, the classes today. And uh, we are planning to replace the nine windows at the Sunday school room. We are hoping that uh, it will cost 25,000. We call 25,000, but presently we are at 11,100 now. So please, you can still join and support this project. We have a donation to the Keck Cemetery. In lovely memory of Michael Dukshia by Barbara Close. We pray that the Lord will grant this uh, Michael a safe hour in his bosom and his memory will come to linger in our heart. Amen. Also, I'd like to tell us that this Wednesday, every Wednesday, is our Youth with the Purpose, 5 30, and our Bible study, 6 30. Um, yeah, it's all by Zoom. So please contact the church office or we'll send out the information during the week. And let us just read all our announcements. And also I'd like to tell you that in this church we have children ed fund and youth development fund. All these funds are available for the church and the use of the community. So if if there's any need, please contact the church office and uh, you will be directed as you know to do. By the grace of God, this Tuesday is our committee meeting, 7 p.m. and official board meeting, 8 p.m. So we are hoping that next Sunday we'll gather back at the church, but let us wait till Tuesday after the official board meeting and uh, we'll be able to tell the church and the whole world the decision of the board. I would like you to keep the board in your prayers as you make uh, this uh, August decision. The Lord bless you. And if there are any other announcements during the service, we will let you know. If you have anything to celebrate this morning, please send it on the Facebook page and we'll share it with the whole world. Let us start by singing from uh, the hypot is from more voices, one voices, dance with the spirit. One voices, more voices, number one voices. And at home, I'd like you to dance with us. <laughs>
Now, just, just shake your body. Just shake your body. And with that, let us gather together this morning, calling upon the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord to be with us and to take control of our servants. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim freedoms for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners. So the Lord's people and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who know. Let us praise the Lord together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for calling us at this time as a servant in this place. In this hour of worship, bring your spirit into us once more to inspire us to serve you with commitment, honesty, and humility. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And our morning first hymn, opening hymn is from Voices United number 567. Will you come and follow me? And let's let us sing together. Sin. It is a greater truth that we are forgiven through God's love in Jesus Christ. To all who only seek the mercy of God, I say, 
In Jesus Christ, our sins is forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Amen. It is time for celebration. If you have anything to celebrate this morning, maybe your birthday, anniversary, ceremonies, please, I'd like to share it with the church this morning. Please share it on our Facebook page and uh, we'll share it with the whole world. Karen Sailor's sons, grandson's birthday. Oh, happy birthday to our grandson. And Peter and Janet are celebrating their 38th anniversary this week. Wow, happy birthday, happy anniversary to Peter and Janet. That's it, that's it, yes. Yeah. That's not a joke. <laughs> Happy anniversary to Greg and Tracy Slater. We rejoice with them too. Any other one? Okay, let's sing uh, congratulations to you. Congratulations to you, to kids of beautiful, we God's greatest blessings. Yeah, the next song is Take My Life and Let It Be. It's a song of commitment, of dedication, and of settings oneself apart. So I would like you to sing it and let the song speak to you as we prepare to listen to the world this morning. From Voices United number 506, Take My Life and Let It Be. Certain village where a woman named Martha 
welcomed you into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Let us pray. Speak to us this morning, our dear Jesus. We come to you with a heart open. We pray that you will fill us with your word. We pray that the entrance of your word will give us knowledge, will give us understanding. We pray that through the instrument of your work, we will not remain the same. We give you praise. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to thank everyone here this morning for being here. And those who are watching us live, I want to say thank you. Today is a I've been choosing as a Minister's Appreciation Sunday. And at the beginning of the month, I started a, a series that I call Capsule Wardrobe. And have talked about Capsule Wardrobe, humility. And last week, I talked about another Capsule Wardrobe, Thanksgiving. And I gave us about a uh, the five G's, that is five G's are the five characteristics of God that I gleaned from Psalm 145. God's greatness, God's goodness, God's glory, God's guarantee, God's grace. And I told us that even though we may have some challenges, but despite all this, that the Lord is good. And I told us that even though we might be complaining here and there, but I want us to know that even our dogs, our cats, our pets in Canada are feeling well and doing better than so many parts, so many people in so many parts of the world. Of the world. Uh, just for us to just take a flight to some parts of third country and we'll come back to Canada and say that and see that we are we are doing better. So we have every cause to do what? To give thanks to God. This morning I will continue in uh, one of these series. I will continue with this series. Capsule World Group. This morning I'll be talking about discernment. Discernment. As we know that this month is Flaggy Appreciation, Minister's Appreciation Month. And today our church has been designed as a, a day to celebrate this. One of a quality, one fundamental quality that a minister must have is discernment. What fundamental quality that a parent, a businessman, a businesswoman, a government worker, a public worker, whatever you might call, you might be, whatever class you might find yourself, children, teachers, whatever class you might find yourself, one of the quality of or a capsule or product we must have is discernment. 
For emphasis sake, I will also define what I mean by a capsule wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe is a collection of a few essential items of clothing that don't go out of fashion, such as skirts, trousers, and coats. Today we will be looking at one of the staple species of Christian life that is essential and timeless for every season, and that is discernment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10, the Bible mentions discernment as one of the gifts of the Spirit and says to another, to another, discerning of the Spirit. And during the following week, I will also be talking about patience as one of the capsule of both meekness and kindness. So it's a continued series. And so this morning, what is discernment? Discernment is the ability to make a smart, another word for smart is essential. Discernment is ability to make an essential or smart judgment about something hidden or obscure. The process of making careful distinction in our thinking about truth. We discover that in every aspect of our life, we need to make judgment. And sometimes the judgment that we're making might be hidden, might not be so clear to us. So we need this spirit of discernment to be able to make this distinction between the truth between what we are, is coming to our heart and between what is truth and between what is false. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 21 to 22 says, But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Abstain from every form of evil. Examine carefully. Everything carefully. In essence, First Thessalonians is telling us that we should do what? We should apply the spirit of the gift of what? Of discernment. But today, unfortunately, discernment is an area where most Christians stumble. Christians are at risk of being tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine has been said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. From the Gospel of Luke, read to us this morning, we walk to the home of two women, Martha and Mary. Jesus was visiting them with his apostles, about 13 adults. Jesus was in the house talking to his apostles. Martha was rushing around, making things ready in the kitchen. She was frying, cooking, boiling, preparing the table just to prepare food for Jesus and all that. She was doing everything. But instead for Mary to join her in the kitchen, Mary, her sister, she discerned at that particular time that she needed to learn and she was sitting at Jesus' feet listening to all that he was saying. She knew that Jesus will only be with her for a short time, so she sat there at Jesus' feet. And you know what? At that time, sitting at someone's feet during Jesus' days was a sign of someone who wanted to learn. When Jesus saw her sitting there, she was telling them the mission. She was telling them some. She was revealing some secrets that they need to know. However, Martha was tired in the kitchen because she was preparing food for 13, about 13 adults. She ran back, she told Jesus in verse 40, Lord, don't you care that my sister has led me to do the work by myself? She even commanded Jesus, tell her to help me. Martha was frustrated with her sister for not helping her. And today, some of us are frustrated because of so many things that are happening around us. We have friends, families, 
Hold on, we have our uh, colleagues, we have our neighbors, and we are frustrated by one thing or the other. Maybe by their attitude, maybe by their behavior, maybe by their words. One thing that we need to help us is the spirit of what? Of discernment. In verse 41, Jesus replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Do you know what happened? When Jesus repeated Martha's name two times, Jesus was telling Martha that I hear for your concern. Jesus is not upset about what Martha is doing. Somebody needs to do the cooking. But Jesus is calling her out of the distraction and anxiety of her serving. Martha is distracted by many things. She keeps the score on how she has done, on how her lazy sister has not done anything. She has drawn the line. Have been cooking. My sister, she has not been doing anything. In verse 42, Jesus said, But few things are needed, and only indeed one. Mary has discount and cheats what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What the very Discern. Mary discern that learning from the master is very, very, is the necessary thing. Mary has decided not to miss out on that opportunity, on what she can learn from Jesus while is in their home by sitting at his feet to listen to what he has to tell them. She is bent on gleaning all she can from the time she has with Jesus, not only a few things, but Everything she can learn from Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of whom? Of God. When it is good to, to cook and care for Jesus, it is not the priority at that time. Jesus pointed out that hearing from him. And feeding our spirit takes precedence over feeding the flesh. My question this morning to everyone that is hearing me is that what takes precedence over your time? What takes precedence over your life? What takes precedence over your priority? What do you give priority to? Do you decide that there are some other things that you can share the way? That's not good. I think that one thing Jesus praises in Mary's behavior in this text is a careful listening and just being present with her, with her guests and God. Jesus is telling us that there's great wisdom in letting the dishes soak in the sink so we can listen to and relax with others in fellowship. Jesus does not miss his work. The better part Mary chose was to be able to focus on what mattered at that moment, to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. That's something that will last long after the real meal has been served and finished. And after the meal is over and dishes have been done and put away, it is something that we need to learn today as never before. I wonder. When we got a lot in our family, in our life, in our workplace, in our church, in our community, when we are volunteering, do we ever discern when to boss? Do you know today it is easy to fall into matter syndrome? Jesus is not looking at our business, but he's looking at our relationship. Jesus is inviting each of us to pause and discern today. Let us put down our Facebook, put down our radio, our TV, our phone, our volunteering. Let us stay at whose feet? At his master feet. Open your Bible, read it, meditate, pause, pray, listen to what we want to tell you. Listen to what we want to tell you. Go for a walk. Jesus is not looking for busy people, but somebody that is full of God, of the master. In conclusion, the message of Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 45 is that we need to discern 
and know that too much of a good thing can be a bad thing when it distract us from the best thing. I want to say it again. That the message of Luke, of the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 45, is that we need to discern and know that too much of a good thing can be a bad thing when it distracts us from the best thing. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, forgive us when we do not discern about many factors for our life, for our time, and let so many things in this world have a higher priority than you. Will you please lead us to discern that you are always number one in our lives? For we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. It is time to give our offer to wherever you might be. Maybe you have given during the week or you have sent your e-transfer or by car. We want to thank you and appreciate you. We want you to know that it is your support that is keeping the ministry of this church going. We have so many ministries to our community to this province and to Canada and to the whole world at large. And uh, it is with the support that is keeping us going. So we appreciate you. I also want to challenge you that you can do more to support the ministry of this church. I want you to know that no matter what you give will be used judiciously. And the Lord loves a cheerful so let us be cheerfully as God has laid it in our hearts. Let us take the opportunity to from all voices one and all. What can we do? <laughs>
with this gift, small to gain so our Lord for you. Bless them with the power of the Holy Spirit, so they may accomplish more than we can ever imagine. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Amen. At this time, I want us to bring our personal prayers and petition before God <coughs> as we go to the prayer of the people and intercession. Bring your personal prayers and petitions before God this morning. May the Lord hear our prayers, hear our petitions and art requests as we bring all our church members, those that are sick or at home, those that are traveling presently, those that have no challenges or the order. Even as we commit the heart of those that are living around this church, that the Lord will put in their heart the love of this church so that they will join the church. Even as we pray for more salvation of soul. And also, as we specifically remember some of our church members, Angela Obama, we bring before you this morning Katha Stone and Maria Walter. We also remember Suzette Maduna. We remember Will and Maggie Patterson. We bring before you Steve Paul and Doris Eden. We also remember the family of Reverend Adinia Adini and all others that remain silently and loudly at this time. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your call upon our life and all the members of this church and for the wonders of the season as the change, as the change, and for gifts of love and compassion you offer us through friends and strangers. We pray that you will endow us fresh grace and divine ability from above and make us better shepherds to all our church members, friends, and strangers. God in your mercy. We are clear. Dear Jesus, we see the body many are carrying and the way differences create divisions. We pray for all those who struggle with the economic impact of the pandemic and for those feeling the stress of these days in deeply personal ways. <coughs> Show us how to support those in difficult and men relationships in our community. God, in your deep mercy, hear our prayers. Dear Jesus, we see challenges for healthcare all around us, and no men still face the effects of COVID 19 or other illnesses and complications that make life hard to cope. We pray for everyone this morning that is facing all these challenges. We pray that you give them strength and compassion 
for all of our treatment and courage and hope to all who wait for healing. God, in your deep mercy, hear our prayers. Dear Jesus, we see countries locked in old animosities and communities overwhelmed by flesh of evil. We pray for millions displaced in current conflicts and by natural disasters and for leaders here and around the world. Open their eyes to see the suffering of the heart and those in the jurisdiction. And open all our eyes to ways we can participate in your solution to situations which break your heart and hearts. God, in your deep mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for your kingdom to come in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we close the service this morning, it's the aim of rededicating ourselves. And it's taken from Voices United number 509. Here I am, Lord.
our hearts desire and our heartfelt words this morning. I pray that the Lord will help us as we make that commitment in the name of Jesus. Let us take the commissioning and benediction this morning. Take us and use us to love and encourage others in the power of your spirit and the name of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Yeah, let us dance with the spoon. We dance here, let us also dance now. Dance with the Spirit in the morning, walk with the Spirit around the long day. Work and hold for the moonlight of morning, listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit. Thank you. 